that um, I believe that not everybody's called to be a prophet, but I believe that everybody could uh, certainly have a gift of prophecy. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at false prophets first. It says here, discernment is needed in the last days. Jesus Christ has warned us to beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Discernment is needed because Jesus warned us many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Okay, so we need to know about false prophets because um, there's going to be many of them. In fact, there, there already are many of them. And what we're going to be looking at is how we can identify uh, what a false prophet is. Because I think it's easy, if they're not of Christ and if they reject Christ, it's, it's, it's easy for us to say, okay, that's a false prophet. But the dangerous thing is, is as Jesus said, what if they come to you in sheep's clothing? So what if they come to you uh, claiming to be uh, a Christian? How are you able to really discern whether that prophet is real? And the reason why this, this comes to my heart is because I see a lot of it. I see a lot of people saying that the Lord said this, the Lord said that. You know, we even used to have somebody who used to come to this Bible study who was saying that the Lord told her that, that it, you know, Paul is false, all of these type of things. So you see it quite a lot of the time. You see a lot of people saying that the Lord said this, the Lord said that. And they quote the Bible. They claim to believe in Jesus. And I just want us to learn how we can discern uh, between false prophets and real prophets for our own sake so that we can, uh, we can, we can mark them and uh, you know, not take them too seriously and so that we don't find ourselves involved in the wrong ministry or so that we don't find ourselves involved in the wrong relationships as well because this is all to do with discernment. So some of the things that I teach today about false prophets is not only uh, relevant to... Uh, to false prophets, but you could also apply this to uh, to anybody who who you might think of, you know, getting into a friendship with or getting into a relationship with. You can apply the, the same teachings that that are going to be mentioned today. So there are two types of false prophets in the Bible. I'm just going to be reading through this, so you can just follow through. There are two types of false prophets in the Bible. Um, so we're going to read Deuteronomy 18 verses 20. It says. But the prophet which shall presume a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So you see, obviously in the time of Moses, this was when it was written, that uh, false prophecy was a very serious thing. Uh, false prophets would get into a lot of trouble in those days. So false prophecy is not a, is not a, a small matter in the eyes of God. And one thing that uh, you see in the Bible is, and you see it today, is that most people who claim to be prophets are not actually prophets, that the, the prophets of God are in the minority and the majority of people who claim to be a prophet or a prophetess are actually false. Okay, so it's only a few that God has called for prophets. Now remember, um, there's a fivefold. Okay, so you've got an apostle, you've got a prophet, you've got a evangelist, you've got a teacher, you've got a pastor. Okay, and the prophet is one of the higher callings. Alongside with the apostle, these are the, the higher type of callings. And these are usually the people that have the most influence, okay, the apostles or the, or the prophets. So don't be surprised if somebody claims to be a prophet, has a big church, has thousands of people following him. Don't be surprised if you find out that that's a false prophet because Prophet, prophetic people are usually very charismatic. Prophetic people uh, say they have dreams. Prophetic people say they have visions. Prophetic people can preach very well. Prophetic people are intelligent, okay? But not everybody who's a prophet is necessarily a, a prophet of, of Jesus Christ. Okay? Because what, what is a prophet? A prophet is a messenger sent by some, to, some type of spiritual power. Okay, so the, the prophet of God is, is somebody that's been... Uh, uh, separated by the Holy Spirit and has been sent forth by the Holy Spirit. And, and this is what leads on to the first point. So the first type of false prophet is the one, I'm just reading from here, just if you want to follow. The first type of false prophet is the one who proclaims that the Almighty has spoken to him or her 
when in fact the Lord has not spoken to him at all. Okay, so these are people that say, oh, the Lord uh, told me that uh, next year there's going to be a rapture. Oh, the Lord told me that, uh, that tomorrow uh, there's going uh, to be a meteorite. Oh, the Lord, the Lord called me to be a prophet. And in all of these cases, the Lord hasn't spoken at all to that person. This is the first type of false prophet. And in fact, this, these are the ones that we as Christians have to be mindful of because this is what tends to happen. Okay. You see a lot of people say, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, okay. If God, I mean, if God has spoken to them and they're saying the Lord said, then there's nothing wrong with that. But if they're saying the Lord said and the Lord didn't say anything to them, then that's a false prophet. Okay. These are the individuals who take the name of the Lord in vain. Okay, so look, Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 14. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of naught and a deceit of their heart. Okay, so this is something that, that uh, God had an issue with in the time of Jeremiah. So there are several examples of this type of false prophet. For example, in the book of Jeremiah, we are introduced to a false prophet called Hananiah. So if we just go to Jeremiah 28, we read from there. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 28. He says, and it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jekina, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests, and in the presence of, the, of the, all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. The Lord do so. The Lord perform thy words, which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of that Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. So Jeremiah, obviously a prophet of God, uh, in this time, uh, basically there was a king called Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon, and this king was going around destroying nations. He, he, he went into Judah. He took all of the, the treasures that were in the temple of the Lord. And he also took some of the kings. And so this prophet Hananiah was saying that God said in two years that our Nebuchadnezzar is going to come back and give all of these treasures back and he's going to release the king that he took. So that's what Hananiah was prophesying. But then listen to the response of, of Jeremiah, verses 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Okay, so prophets, many prophets, what they do is they they predict that something is going to take place. That's one of the, uh, the responsibilities of a prophet to say, oh, Donald Trump is going to win a second election. Donald Trump is going to beat Joe Biden. We saw many prophets doing that uh, before Donald Trump obviously won the, uh, Donald Trump lost the election. Okay, and Jeremiah is basically saying that, look, the way that we know if God has really sent somebody is, is if what they say actually comes to pass. If, they, if it doesn't come to pass, then God hasn't sent them. And if God didn't send them, then that means they're a false prophet. It's, it's really that simple, to be, to be honest, guys. If somebody says, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and none of it happens, then that person hasn't been sent by God. 
uh, verses 10. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. Notice, we're, we're talking about Hananiah, and Hananiah is a false prophet, but the Bible calls him a prophet. Okay, so just because somebody's a prophet doesn't mean they're a prophet of God. They can be, they can be a prophet of a different God. You know, Muhammad, they call him a prophet. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a prophet, but he's, he, he's a prophet of Allah, isn't he? He's not a prophet of, of, of Jehovah. He's a prophet of Allah. Okay. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. So Hananiah makes that he makes that bold assertion, that bold prophecy again, saying that look, God is gonna uh, God is gonna destroy this king Nebuchadnezzar. We're gonna be free from this king Nebuchadnezzar in two years. He gave a specific prophecy: in two years, we're gonna be free from this tyrant of a king. And Jeremiah said, "Okay, if that's what God said, he just walked away." Verses twelve. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, the prophet. After that, Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, You have broken the yokes of wood, but you will make for them yokes of iron. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah, the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make this people to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year you will die, because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Okay, so... <laughs> Jeremiah's prophecy came to pass. <laughs> Jer Jeremiah said, you're going to die because <laughs> you're, you're, you're being a false prophet and you're going around saying, the Lord said this, the Lord said that. And you're making people trust in a lie. And this is what I'm saying. It's not a, it, it, to be a false prophet is not a small matter in, 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 in the eyes of the Lord. And maybe this serves as a warning, okay, for us to just, not put this, you know, put any additional responsibility upon ourselves, which God hasn't called us for. Okay, because if we if we if we teach a lie, then there will be judgment. Okay, so look, you see people out there. We might know some people that claim to be prophets. We need to share what I'm sharing with us tonight and say, look, has God really called you to be a prophet? Okay, because as a prophet, you're going to start making predictions, and you know, you know, prophets, prophets are very impartial. And what I mean by impartial is they don't take sides. You saw in the case of, in America, you had all of these prophets saying, oh, Donald Trump is going to win. Donald Trump is going to win. And it was very emotional. They were, they were prophesying from an emotional heart. They were prophesying because they wanted Donald Trump to win. Not because God had told them that Donald Trump was going to win. They wanted Donald Trump to win because they thought that he reflect or that he is better for the Christian community than Joe Biden. And but prophets are not like that. Prophets are in the world, but they're not of the world. They only just speak whatever they hear from God or whatever God tells them to speak or do. That's what they do. Okay? Another example of this type of false prophet, again, the type of false prophet we're looking at is the ones that in this day and age claim to be Christian and say that God sent, sent them to do this, or, or God told them this, but God hasn't told them anything. This is the type of false prophet we're looking at. So another example is the 400 false prophets of Ahab. Okay, let's go to Second Chronicles, and let's read this story as well. So Second Chronicles chapter 18. Second Chronicles chapter 18. Let's read from, I can read from verses one. Can read from verses one. All right. So, so guys, this is also around the time of um, 
of Elijah. Elijah was around prophesying around this time. So Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Okay, so Jehoshaphat, I think I've, I've shared this before. I'll just, I'll annotate this really quickly just so that we get an idea. So basically remember that uh, Israel was divided into two. You've got the Northern Kingdom, which is Israel. It's called Israel. And Ahab was the king of Israel. And then you've got the Southern Kingdom, which is called Judah. And Jehoshaphat was the king of, of Judah. So they were split up at this time. Okay. So verses, let's go read from verses three. And Ahab, just read this comment. There's a man on TikTok who says he just speaks anything that comes to mind when speaking tongues. Is that how speaking tongues should be? Well, look, there's, there's different types of, of tongues. I mean, there's, there's an unknown tongue, uh, which he's probably referring to, and then there's tongues where you speak uh, different languages, like, uh, you know, Spanish or Israeli or, or whatever. Uh, presumably, Sorry. Say again? Sorry, unknown, unknown. Pardon? Unknown tongue. Is that the way to speak? Well, I mean, with unknown tongues, you have to you have to let your spirit pray through you. I don't know if it's through your mind. I wouldn't say it's your mind, I'll say it's your spirit. But with unknown tongues, you have to do that through faith. Okay, because with unknown tongue, I think a lot of people have the impression that with unknown tongue, that you're not in control and you know some spirit comes upon you, the Holy Ghost just comes upon you, and you're no longer in control, and that's the only time you can speak in unknown tongue. But Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. So that means Paul was intentionally, through his will and through faith, praying in an in a, in a unknown tongue. Okay, so the, how do I pray? I, I, I combine the two. Sometimes I pray in English, and sometimes I find that edifying. Sometimes I pray in an unknown tongue. But when I pray in an unknown tongue, I pray through faith. I pray that... that, that that the Holy Spirit is in me and the Holy Spirit is, is giving me the utterance and giving me the unction and guiding me to say whatsoever he wants me to say in, in that unknown tongue. And, uh, you know, when, when you do it, Paul says that you should also desire interpretation. So it shouldn't just be a case of just speaking in that unknown tongue and, and then just leaving it, but you should try and discern what God is saying through that tongue. And I, I'll be honest, I've had times where I've spoken in tongues for hours. And after I've spoken in tongues, I then just start, like, I'm not, my, my mind is not there. I'm just in the spirit. And then I just start speaking English. And it's like the Holy Spirit says some English words through me and I'm not in control. The, the Holy Ghost speaks in English through me. And I thought I was speaking in tongues. I actually start speaking in English. And then I get an interpretation of, of what the Holy Spirit uh, has me to say. So look, brother, I think you, you believe you have the, the gift, you believe you have the Holy Ghost, then pray in an unknown target. It might not, it's not going to make sense to you. But, you know, the, the, the gifts of God, uh, the things that are spiritual, they, they're not discerned by the carnal man. Okay? So people that are so carnal and scientific about faith, they will never really understand tongues. Okay? They, they want to be in control of, of everything. Um, they won't really understand tongues you have to do it through faith but uh just to encourage you paul said i pray in tongues more than you will so paul was definitely a believer in unknown tongues you know there's some people that say the only tongues that are that are available are the tongues that are in english or portuguese or french no paul intentionally said an unknown tongue okay so he prayed in a sort of secret language uh i don't know if it's an angel to be honest i don't know if it's an angelic language I don't know if it's the language of God. I know, all I know is it's an unknown language. It's not a, a language that people speak to in this world. It's, it's an unknown, an unknown tongue. So yeah, brother, go ahead with your unknown tongues. Keep praying in faith. Uh, you're doing it from, 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 you know, uh, from. You're doing it in faith, and and Bible says whatsoever is not done in faith it sins. So yeah, my brother, keep going. Amen. Uh, so Second Chronicles chapter eighteen. Verses 3, it says, And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth-Gilead? And he answered him, 
I am as thou art, and my people as, as thy people, and we will be with you in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets, 400 men, and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I fall there? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hands. So these men are false prophets. They, they, uh, Ahab said, Should we go to war? He's like, Go, go. God is saying that you're going to win the war. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not a, here a prophet of the Lord besides that you might inquire of him? So what I love about Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat could discern. These men were speaking in the name of the Lord, but Jehoshaphat knew straight away that these are not real prophets. And I think that's the type of discernment we need to have in these last days. We need to recognize that these people are prophesying, but they're, they're definitely not. They're not real prophets. <laughs> um. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man. Okay, so out of the four, so there's 400 men, there were false prophets. There's only one man that's real. And that's what I was saying earlier on, that a lot of the numbers, a lot of the people that are saying that they are prophets are false. And it's actually the minorities, only a few people that are actually genuine. There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me were always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, set either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes. And they sat on, in on a floor place at the entering of the gate of Samaria. And the prophets prophesied before them, and Zedekiah, the son of Chaniah, had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with thee shalt thou push Syria until they be consumed. So Zedekiah is another false prophet. And all the prophets prophesied, saying, Go up to Ramath Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it unto thy hand. And a messenger that sent to, to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let your word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs and speak thou good. Okay, so false prophets, they speak what you want to hear. They don't, they don't tell you the truth because the, the, the unfortunate truth is that sometimes prophets are going to give us bad news. Okay, not every prophecy is going to be good news. And no. prophets are quite stern. Prophets are very serious. Okay, there's a prophet in the, in the New Testament called Agabus. He's the, he's the only prophet that they really talk about in much detail in the, in the book of Acts. And if you read his prophecies, they were all negative. He prophesied that there was going to be a famine. And he prophesied that Paul was going to be imprisoned. Both of those prophecies that he gave, they came true. Because prophets that are sent by God, they don't lie. They, whatever they prophesy will come to pass because they're being sent by God. But these false prophets, they only prophesy what you want to hear. That's why these prophets tell you, oh, the Lord is saying you're going to get married in the next month. Oh, the Lord is saying that this is your season of breakthrough. Oh, the Lord is saying that this, this is a wealth transfer. This month, you're going to be a millionaire. They're prophesying what you want to hear. They're not prophesying about what's actually going to take place. They're not actually teaching you about holiness and righteousness because prophets are not just here to tell you, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. Prophets also teach people about uh, repentance. And that's what prophets focus on most of the time. Okay? John the Baptist was a prophet. But John the Baptist very rarely prophesied about, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, that is going to happen, this is going to happen. Many of these false prophets, they're so focused on this is going to happen, that is going to happen, this is going to happen. And the reason why they do it is because they want to gain a gathering for themselves. They want to gain influence they want to gain power they want to they want to have a large following for themselves they don't want to bring people to christ they want people to follow them so they give they give all of these prophecies that encourage people and uh, give people hope uh, and it's manipulation because these prophet these prophecies that they're giving are not coming from the lord they're coming from their own hearts some of them believe they're coming from the lord but some of them are being deceived some of them are being some of them don't even know that they're false. Some of them do know that they're false. Some of them do know that they're just intentionally manipulating people. But there's some false prophets that are just being deceived and they're going around deceiving others as well. 
And I was saying this earlier on that, look, the prophets that you read of in the Bible, they had an encounter with the Lord. Look at Moses. Moses had an encounter with the Lord. He was, he was looking after the sheep. And then he saw a burning bush. And it was clear to him that God had sent him. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah was taken up into heaven. And he saw, he saw the Lord on the throne. And he saw the, the holy angels. And he heard the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Isaiah had an encounter. Jesus is a prophet. Okay, yes, he's the, he's the first begotten son of God. He's the son of God, but he's also a prophet. Jesus had an encounter with the Lord after he was baptized by John the Baptist. Um, oh, someone's raised their hand. Sorry, yeah. Uh, Raylin, what did you want to share? Oh yeah, my, my hand's been raised for for a while. Oh no, it was it was back when you were discussing um, speaking in tongues because I know like I speak in tongues. I started back in twenty thirteen. I remember I had a um, I think she was an apostle, but she was pretty much like a, a prophet, pretty well uh, in a way. Kind of well, she was pretty much an apostle. That's her title at the time. Um, but like speaking in tongues because she was trying to get us all, you know, saying like it was possible for everyone. Um, so she wanted to get us all um, able to speak in tongues that that day or evening i can remember remember what time of day it was but anyway um but yeah she had us um she was standing over us showed us to and i mean by us it was like me and like two or three other people um we were sitting down and she was like just close your eyes and just focus on jesus you know and just you know think about god think about jesus and you could pretty much get your um allow yourself to be overcome with the holy spirit and just close your eyes, focus on God, and just say to yourself, like, you know, thank you, Jesus, or like, hallelujah, something like that, or thank you, God, and just keep repeating that until the Holy Spirit takes over your tongue. And that's what started me speaking in tongues, because it took probably, you know, around, I'd say like, I don't even know, so under 10 minutes, but at most 10 minutes for it to actually happen for me. And then when it started to happen, like right when it was trying to happen, I would kind of like stop myself because it was kind of freaking me out because I could feel like, like I was about to start like I you know I was already talking but I could feel like my focus on the words I was saying start to change because like that focus started to pretty much be um I started to be like again just overcome with the spirit and um my first two languages that came out of my mouth were I think the first one was I was trying to pull out was Spanish I already speak Spanish so that was a whole thing I already speak Spanish I already speak Hebrew so those are the first two languages that tried to come out of me and she she stopped me she said what she was like do you um know what you're saying right now. I was like, yeah. And I was like, it's in Spanish. She said, okay, you speak Spanish, you speak Hebrew, let that go and just let the spirit take over. So I went back into focus mode. I'm, I'm still trying to do it. And then all of a sudden it, it, um, the spirit took over me. And I was speaking a whole unknown tongue to me. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what language it was. It was nothing I'd ever heard before. And to this day, when I speak in tongues, it's still a language I don't, don't know of. And I was in church last week. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about, uh, my pastor was talking about how the tongue you speak may be a known, you know, earthly language, but it may be a like yeah. heavenly language, yeah. you know, something in the spirit, in the spirit realm that you probably just don't know. And that's what it pretty much, I, I, it made me think I never thought of it that way. I always thought that speaking in tongues was like an earthly language that everyone could recognize it. But, mm. but when I, again, I hear what I, when I, when I hear what I say, when I'm speaking in tongues, I don't know what language that is. Like I've heard almost every language it seems mm-hmm. known to man. So like living in LA, living in New York city, like you're around, those major cities you're going to hear all especially new york city you're going to hear everything like all the time you can go to different blocks you're going to hear something different every single time it's like that in some parts of la i'm, I'm here in la and it's kind of typically you're going to hear like spanish and other language around here but my point is it's like when it happens at first it's kind of like it kind of like weirded me out in a good way but like now i'm used to it and to this day i don't know what language i speak as i let the spirit yeah. speak for me because of mm-hmm. course like in romans 8 talks about how the spirit you know makes intercession for us and you know speaks you know and and groanings that we can't understand so i let that happen and it's a pretty cool experience and i'd rather it be this the spirit speaking because you know your your human person can be very selfish and just pray for yourself and whatever but you know you know how to pray for other people but at the same time i i think it's very important to speak in tongues so if it helps i mean you can try the method that the apostle had me try and i was pretty much just close your eyes and focus on god and, and just say thank you god thank, thank you jesus or or hallelujah, whatever, some type of praise to God and, and let the spirit take over. And then you'll be surprised how fast you can um, just start speaking in tongues that way. Uh, thank you. Look, it's, it, you know, the Holy Spirit leads us differently. Some of us, it's a, through a dream. My first time speaking in, in tongues was through a dream and I hadn't even given my life to the Lord. That's the first time I spoke in tongues. For some people, 
in the case of Acts chapter 10, Paul, it says Peter was preaching. He said, whilst, they yet, whilst Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell upon them that heard him and they began speaking in tongues, magnifying Lord. Some, they were praying, Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came upon them. They started speaking in different languages. So that's a really encouraging te testimony uh, because uh, Brother Emmanuel shows you why I was just saying that there's different types of tongues. There's an unknown tongue and then there's languages. Speak whatever the Spirit of God leads you to speak. Sometimes the Spirit of God wants you to pray in English. I've had it in times where God wants me to just pray in English. He wants me to pray in English. But one thing's for sure is that leave tongues for your, for, for, uh, for the, your private prayer. Okay, don't uh, pray too much in, in public um, uh, because when you're in a public place in, in church, when you're in fellowship, you want to speak in a language that edifies other people. You don't want to <laughs> speak in tongues. Because what the Bible says that when you speak in tongues, he that speaketh in tongue uh, edifieth himself. But this is why we're talking about prophecy today. Because prophecy doesn't edify yourself. This is why it's a, it's a superior gift. Prophecy edifies the church. And that's what the church needs. The church needs to be built up. The church needs to be, uh, to be encouraged. And that's why we need real prophets out there. And it's, it's my, my prayer, you know, I don't, I, I'm, you know I, I don't put it past the Lord. I believe God can make us all prophets. I honestly believe that. Prophets and prophetesses. I really believe that. You know, um, Moses, there was a time when um, God said to Moses, he said, put your spirit upon 70 elders. Okay, because Moses was doing all the work by himself. So the spirit of the Lord came upon 70 elders. And when the spirit came upon them, they began to prophesy. They all began to prophesy. That's what happens when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You begin to, you, sometimes you begin to prophesy. And Joshua went to Moses and said, oh, I heard these people, they were prophesying, they were prophesying. And I think Joshua was trying to, you know, tell Moses they shouldn't probably be prophesying. And then Moses said, are you jealous for my sake? He said, I wish all of the Lord's people were prophets. And I think God was, God was speaking through Moses there. I think that was the heart of God. God wants all of his people to be prophets. All, he wants all of us to be messengers. But the reality is, even as we have to, uh, to strive and to desire the best gifts, we also need to strive and desire the best offices. The Bible says that he that, require, he that desires the office of an elder desires a good thing. God cannot make you an elder unless you want to be an elder. God cannot make you a prophet unless you want to be a prophet. But what we see, we have a lot of people misrepresenting uh, the, prophet, the prophetic office. A lot of people, they don't spend time in the wilderness. Most prophets, if you see them, they spent time in the wilderness. Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness. Moses spent 40 years in the wilderness. John the Baptist was in the wilderness from a young man. All of these prophets were in the wilderness. They spent a lot of time alone with the Lord because it takes a lot of time for you to be able to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit says. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't speak like us. The Holy Spirit is very, is very, the way that he speaks is very subtle. And the Holy Spirit doesn't, doesn't speak to everybody in the same way. So I can't sit you down here today and be like, okay, this is the Holy Spirit speaking. This is how the Holy Spirit speaks to me. So therefore the Holy Spirit speaks to you like that. No. For me, it may be that the Holy Spirit speaks to me through the word. For you, it may be the Holy Spirit speaks to you through a dream. So I can't teach you how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. It's the only, only the Holy Spirit can teach you. But to, for, you to, for you to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying for your life, you have to spend a lot of time with him. And what you're seeing with these false prophets is that they, they, they disregard this process. They disregard consecration. They disregard the wilderness season. And they just rush straight into ministry. And they claim, because they've, got, they've had a dream. They had a dream one day, then they claim that they're a prophet. And then people start following them. And, and they, they, they start prophesying to people. And they start giving words of knowledge. And people are like, yeah, that actually happened. That actually happened. So they're getting some of these prophecies true. So then they get puffed up. By the time they know it, they start misrepresenting God. 
because they're not actually, they're not, they, they, they may have some accurate prophecies, but then in the midst of those accurate prophecies, there's some false prophecies. And in the midst of their false prophecies, there's also misconduct in the way that they behave. They haven't sufficiently consecrated themselves unto the Lord, so they don't actually represent Christ through their actions. So everybody has, I believe, I may be wrong, but I believe everybody can be a prophet in the same way that everybody can be a Christian. But the question is, who wants to be a prophet? We just read about Micaiah here. Jehoshaphat said to, to King Ahab, do you not have any prophets? <laughs> do you not have any real prophets? You know, Ahab brought 400 of these prophets. Jehoshaphat said, do you not have any real prophets? Uh, Ahab said, yeah, there's one, but I hate him. <laughs> If you're a prophet, you're going to be hated. People are not going to like you. And that's just, that's just a matter of fact. You're a real prophet of God. People are going to stand against you. If you're a real prophet of God, you're going to have to do some hard things that other people are not called to do. Look at John. John was in the wilderness eating locusts. He was eating locusts. I don't think he did that because he wanted to do it. I think it's, he, he had to do it. Look at Ezekiel. I believe Ezekiel had to lie on his back or, or lie on his side for 390 days or something ridiculous. Look at Christ. Christ, the prophet, the son of God. God said, go and die on the cross for the sins of these people. So being a prophet is not an easy thing. And that's why I'm convinced there are not many, many prophets out there. Because to be a prophet, you have to go through a lot. And mo many of these prophets that we read of, not just in the Old Testament, also in the New Testament, a lot of them were persecuted. That's why Jesus said, from the days of Abel unto the days of uh, Zechariah the prophet, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. Abel was, although Abel wasn't mentioned as a prophet, I'm, Abel was likely a prophet. And look what happened to Abel. He was, he was persecuted. He was killed. It says... Oh, actually, let's keep reading. Let me keep reading. Um, just check the time. Let's read from verses 13. We're still 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Let's, I just want to read uh, this point. It's quite, it's quite telling, actually, uh, what Micaiah says. Micaiah sees a vision of the Lord. So it says, And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God says, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto Micaiah, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And Micaiah said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the kid, king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. You know, notice that this is the same thing that Jesus said. I don't know if you can remember, there's a passage where, I, I can't even remember. I think it says that maybe even Jesus, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it says that Jesus wept. And he said that he was basically saying that these people have no, sh no shepherd. These people, because he was looking around and he's looking at all the religious leaders and all the false prophets of his time. And he was like, none of these people are genuine. None of these people actually care for Israel. And this is what Micaiah sees in this vision. He says, I see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as a sheep that has no shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them, let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. What he's actually seeing there in the vision, he's seeing that Ahab is going to die. But he doesn't want to tell him. Micaiah, is, what Micaiah, because the shepherd is supposed to be Ahab. He's the king over Israel. And that's what he'd seen. And he knew the interpretation, but he didn't want to tell him. And the king of Israel said to, said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. So this is Micaiah speaking again. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord. 
and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil against you. Okay, so the thing here that we can see is that false prophets have a lying spirit. And the scary thing is that <laughs> it may be that God has even given them that spirit, that lying spirit, whereby they're actually deceived, whereby they actually believe that what they're saying is coming from God, in a way it is coming from God, but it's coming from a lying spirit that is sent from God. Okay? Now, needless to say, Ahab died. The prophecy that uh, Micaiah saw came to pass. They went to bat he went to battle. He listened to the, uh, the advice of his false prophets, and he died in that battle. Okay. So it says here, uh, real God... The real prophets sent by God give accurate prophecies. Oh, guys, there's another. Have we got time for more scripture? Let's, guys, let's go for one more scripture. There's quite a lot of good scriptures here. And maybe we'll go through this on Saturday. Does anybody want to share anything? No? All right. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23 quickly. We'll look at one more scripture. Jeremiah chapter 23. Let's read from verses... Read from verses 21. Jeremiah 23 from verses 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, Yet they prophesied, for if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. I am God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see, saith the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. So Many of these false prophets, as I said earlier on, they draw people to themselves. They're not drawing people to God. A prophet is supposed to lead people to God. And the, the main way that the, the prophet leads people to God is by teaching people the commandments of God. It's about teaching them to repent. So when these prophets are seeing, a lot of these prophets that are real, they see negative things. So they, they see these negative things, and then they use these negative things that God is giving them to warn the people that, look, you need to actually change you need to actually repent because if you don't repent, there's going to be judgment. John, the apostle, was a prophet and he wrote the book of Revelation. And if you see the book of Revelation, yeah, there's some positive in it, but that positive doesn't come until after the negative. And John, the apostle, saw many negative things that were going to take place. John saw how there was, there was going to be this kingdom that was going to persecute the church. John saw many negative things, but he used that to, to, to inform people that they need to repent, that they need to get right with, with God before the judgment. And what God is saying through Jeremiah here is that he has, a, he has a problem with these false prophets because they're not teaching people the right way. What good is telling people, oh, God is going to give you a husband if that woman is not right? What good is it telling a man that you're going to be prosperous if that man is still living in fornication, if that man is still living in sin? The priority should be that people repent. The priority sh should be that people turn from their sins. God doesn't just give us these dreams just to, uh, to, to exalt us, to make us look God good. God gives us dreams so that we can help people change their ways, turn from their sins, and live a righteous life. Because God is concerned not about dreams. God is concerned about salvation. 
God is not concerned, not about prophecy, but God is concerned about righteousness. So that is a real prophet. If you see so many prophets, they're focused on themselves, they're focused on dreams. You know, I had this dream, I had this dream. They're not, and they're not teaching anything about repentance. Then look, that's definitely a false prophet. He's not a real prophet. No, no real prophet is going to focus on dreams. Read the whole book of Jeremiah. There's one theme in the book of Jeremiah. There's re read the book of Ezekiel. There's one theme. Read the book of Isaiah. There's one theme. Read the book of John. There's one theme. Or the book of Revelation. There's one theme. All the prophets talk about God, give glory to God, and they tell people to, to turn to him, to, to live in harmony with him, to live in peace with him. And as I think it's, uh, is it Micaiah says that, what does the Lord God want from you but to walk humbly with him, you know, to fear him and to walk humbly with him? That's what the Lord wants. As I said, it's not about this dream or that dream. Verses 28, the prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? And so this is God's focus. God's focus is, of a prophet is not a dream. Verses 29, is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. Okay, so they were prophets in this time that, <laughs> and they still exist today, that they go onto YouTube, they hear what some prophet said. Oh, some prophet says that, oh, there's going to be a financial meltdown next year. So they, they take heed of that. And then they do, then they do their own video and say, yeah, the Lord said there's going to be a financial meltdown next year. Or they hear from some, <laughs> some prophetess and the prophetess is saying that, yeah, the rapture is taking place in 2023. So they believe it and then they start preaching it themselves. God is against all of that. Behold, I'm against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams. You know, you can have dreams that come from the Lord, but you can also have soulless dreams. Dream, not every dream comes from the Lord. Some dreams are not from God. Some dreams are just dreams. But people are having dreams and they're saying, that, oh, it's from God, it's from God, it's from God. This is, this is a prophecy, this is a prophecy. Did you take time to pray? Did you take time to fast? You know, what I love about Jeremiah, Jeremiah is a prophet. Jeremiah had an encounter with the Lord when he was young, when he was, I think he was a teenager, God called him to be a prophet. And there was this, there's a story in the book of Jeremiah where some Israelites came to Jeremiah and they inquired of him and they said, to him, oh, Jeremiah, we want to go into Egypt. Can you inquire of the Lord and find out whether we can go to Egypt or not? You know what Jeremiah did? The Bible says Jeremiah prayed and, uh, for seven days. And it was on the seventh day that he heard from God and God gave him an answer. Why are people having dreams and they're not even seeking God? They're not praying. They're not fasting. They're not finding out what, what are you saying, God? They have a dream one night. They're on YouTube the next day and they're saying, the Lord... I had this dream, thus saith the Lord, the Lord says this, the, the Lord said this is going to happen, the Lord said this, he didn't even pray, did he even ask. Jeremiah was a prophet and he would still wait seven days before hearing the word of God. So what makes us feel that we can just know what God is saying at any moment because we have a dream or we have a vision or because we have a feeling? <laughs> now, many people just feel <laughs> that, that this is going to happen or that's going to happen or God is saying this. No, don't use the Lord's name in vain. Don't say the Lord said this if you know the Lord didn't tell you anything. Don't say the Lord said this if you feel the Lord said something. Only say the Lord said if you know 100% the Lord said. Because now if you're, if you're saying the Lord said and the Lord didn't say, then you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be, you're going to be classified as a false prophet. You're going to destroy your testimony. You're going to blaspheme in the name of the Lord. So if you're going to say anything, the Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak the oracles of God. So if you're going to say anything at all, just speak what the word of God says. And that way you're going to be protected. Speak what the word of God says, do what the word of God says, and you'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Don't add to what the word of God says. Don't exalt yourself and make yourself to be some sort of prophet or prophetess. And I, I know none of us are here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the church. I know none of us here are like that. But I'm saying all of this so that we can, now our eyes are open when we see people saying, oh, the Lord told me this, the Lord told me that. And you're like, okay, did the Lord really tell you that? Did the Lord really tell you that? He probably didn't. <laughs> um, 
that's a fine. All right, yeah, let's let's close there. Um, we'll look we'll look at this a little bit more uh, next time, God willing. Um, but we're just closing the time of prayer. Father God, thank you, Lord, for uh, this Bible study today. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us, um, for giving us the scripture uh, for us to learn uh, your word. I just pray, Lord, that, uh, you know, even as you said in your word, Father God, that we should desire the gift of prophecy. I pray that all of us would have a, a gift of prophecy. I pray that we would have visions, we would have dreams. Yeah. I pray, Lord, that, uh, you know, we will be, all be able to speak in tongues, Lord, yeah. here, and interpret the tongues. Father, I pray that we would all be righteous. I pray, Lord God, that you would raise up a prophetic, uh, you know, a prophetic anointing upon all of us, Lord. And I pray mm -hmm. that we would live righteously and holy without blame, without spot, uh, mm -hmm. for the days of our lives, Lord. I yeah. pray, Lord, uh, for our family. I pray for our friends. I pray that you keep us in the faith and you preserve us uh, to eternal life. In Jesus' mighty mm -hmm. name, amen. 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 God bless everybody. God bless, God bless you. you, Lord. All right. God right. we'll bless, bless you all. Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. How are you all doing? Yeah. We're fine. Thank you. We're doing well. Brilliant. God bless you all. You know, it's love to see you all. And uh, hope you're all right, brother Madapi. You know, God bless you. God bless you. Bless you too. Yeah. And um, Saturday, if you're up for that, I'm, I'm more than happy to do a teaching. 100% bro. I, love, I can't wait, brother. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Love you all. God bless you. Bye. Bye. I love you. Bye. God bless.